Welcome back to WordPress Made Easy. In this video, we're talking about categories and tags. Now, I know this is not the most exciting topic in this entire course, which, by the way, if you haven't seen the rest of the course, make sure you go back to the beginning. I promise you'll learn something if you watch all the way through. But categories and tags are important enough to your site's success that we have to talk about them. So let's get back into the back end of WordPress. Here is the post section in the left hand sidebar. You can see that this site has two posts. We created them in earlier videos. We've got my first post and some useful links to get you started, which is kind of the default WordPress post. And over here, if I go a couple columns over, I'm gonna see categories and tags. Now, I have not categorized these posts, which is generally bad practice because Google likes to understand what your site is about. And when you categorize things, it makes it easier for to parse. It also is a nice usability feature for actual users of your site so they can find other related posts. So you can think of categories as the broad topic of your post. If I were reviewing movies, maybe I would create a category for each genre of movie that I was reviewing and that would be how I organized my posts. Now right over here we have tags. Now tags are very different than categories because remember categories were broad and in our example we used movie genres. Well tags might be the actors who are starring in the movies or the topic of the movie. It could be a sports movie or a World War II movie. You get the idea. You could include directors in there as well. It's very common to have two, three, four, five tags inside of a single post. Whereas for categories of posts, we usually want to restrict that to one. So how do you set up categories and tags? Well, it's actually very easy. Over here in the left-hand sidebar, underneath posts, we have categories and we have tags. Let's start off looking at adding a category. Let's name our new category news. So the idea here would be if I'm running a business and I want to post some news about my business, I could put it under the category news. Makes sense? We'll give it a slug. We're actually gonna talk more about this later on, but that would basically be the URL friendly version of the name so that if you type that in uh, with a slash after your domain name, you'd be able to see all posts in that category. Then I can choose the parent category. So which basically means I could have subcategories under a main category. An example would be, let's say I'm blogging about heavy metal music. Well, heavy metal might be the main category, but then underneath that I could have industrial metal, death metal, progressive metal, you get the idea. Down here we can add a description. I've never actually entered a description for any of my categories. It says that the description is not prominent by default, but some themes may show it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new category here. And there we go, I've got my category added. Let's go back to the posts and start to categorize them. Now, of course, I can set the category under the edit screen. If I click right here, over on the right-hand sidebar, I see categories show up here, and I can just uncheck uncategorized and choose news and then update. But there's another even faster way to change the category if that's all you want to do. We can go under quick edit. Here is the category section. I can choose news and hit update. All right, so we set our categories and it really wasn't that complex. And you know what? Creating tags really isn't any harder. However, I'm gonna show you a different approach here. Now, of course, we could go under tags and just add them in like we did our categories, but that's not very likely to happen. If you're blogging and you're hurrying to publish a post, you're probably not gonna think, well, let me go to a different screen and enter some tags and then go back to my post and then tag my post. Well, the folks at WordPress were smart enough to think about how people are gonna end up using this software and you can actually create a tag from right inside of the post. So let's try doing that. Let's go ahead and edit my first post here. And here's the category selection. Right below that is tags. I can add a new tag right here. Add Tim Ferriss, WordPress, and blog. Great, so I've got my three tags added right here. All I have to do is update, and now my tags are saved. Notice that I could add a category right from the edit post screen as well. Although after you've been blogging for a certain period of time, you're probably not gonna end up adding too many categories to your blog. Remember, they're supposed to be kind of broad topics. So if you have dozens and dozens of categories, you might be using them a little bit wrong. They might be better as tags. Now wait, don't go. There's still one more important lesson to learn about categories and tags in that when you create categories and tags, WordPress makes dozens of pages about them. So each post is gonna have its own category page and you end up with all of these redundant pages inside of WordPress. And then Google goes and crawls them and it thinks your website is full of all of these junk pages that never get any traffic. We wanna only show Google our best pages that get the most traffic so they think our site is very busy. How do we fix this? Well, don't worry. You can use the free SEO Press plugin. We installed it over in the plugins video if you haven't seen that. 
go check that lesson out. But for now, I'm just gonna head down to the SEO Press plugin. I'm gonna go under Titles and Meta and then choose Taxonomies right over here. Now there's a few options you probably wanna check right here. I can, I can turn off the SEO metadata for this taxonomy. I can do it for the tags as well. But most importantly, what I wanna do is check this box that says, do not display this taxonomy archive in search engine results. And then I'll go down and do the same thing for tags. I do recommend doing this for both categories and tags so you don't get a bunch of redundant or low value results inside of Google. So that's it, nice, simple, easy lesson. Now I hope you understand tags and categories. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any more videos in this series. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.